Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sydney from PhoneDog.com and finally, welcome to PhoneDog Live. We are, we're only a little bit late. It's only, you know, 33 minutes late. That's, that's okay. Uh, I do apologize for being late. Um, we had a situation with the password. It was changed and I don't know who changed it because nobody knew what the password was. And so I was like, I was, I mean, you got, you guys saw Taylor was on here. I was emailing Aaron and like, no one knew what the password was. And I'm just like, okay, somebody changed the password. I mean, surely somebody knows what it was or what it is anyway. So I finally got that. Uh, but you know, the usual problem, always a problem with Ustream. stream. We're not even, we're not even going to talk about that because we're already running late. Um, but this is phone dog live. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for being patient. Uh, I know, I know 30, it's 35 minutes now. It's, I'm very sorry, but thank you for being patient. Um, of course, if you're watching the recording of this, you have no idea and you don't care because you watch this whenever you want to. Um, which I guess is a benefit to watching the recording. You don't have to worry about all of the technical problems, but when we're live, nothing goes right. That's the way it is every week. So, um, just thank you guys for waiting. Uh, we do have a pretty good show. I'm going to try to keep it at an hour still. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll talk about the usual stuff, um, this week and just, you know, everything that just happened just caps off a very strange and bad week for me. I, um, I actually didn't, I wasn't here for most of this week. I took off sort of all of a sudden on Monday. Um, and then I came back yesterday, but I was out just for personal emergency. And so, um, this week has been just all kinds of not normal. And then, you know, to cap it all off with this, um, it's been just, just not, it's just not my week. It just has not been my week, but it's okay. Um, we're just, we're just going to get through it. So yeah, if you're wondering, um, if you guys, um, if you guys watch the dog pound, I don't know if anyone here watches that, but if you do, uh, if you're wondering why I didn't have one this week, it was because I was gone and I, I like I said, it was a personal thing and I just, I couldn't do it. So I apologize for not having that. Also, our Wednesday Facebook Q&A, um, I know a lot of people enjoy that. Um, I also wasn't here for that. So anyway, I apologize for all of that and for being gone, but we're just going to get started. So, um, yeah, so basically the, st the moral of that story, the reason why I told you that was not because I thought you care, but all, but just because, um, I've just been gone. And so I didn't know of anything that happened this week. And of course there wasn't really that much. I mean, now like today, um, whenever I did a recap and kind of just like read every single news article, um, which is what I usually do throughout the week, but I did it just all today. Um, there wasn't a lot that happened, but I think the big thing, um, that I was like, whoa, I, I, how come I didn't hear about that? Um, uh, Sanjay Jha, the current Motorola CEO, Motorola Mobility CEO, is going to be replaced uh, whenever, whenever the acquisition with Google and Motorola is completely done. Um, it's, it's been approved by, I think, all of the governmental agencies that have to approve it, um, but I guess they're still kind of in that transition mode. And so once the buyout is complete, uh, Sanjay Jha will no longer be the CEO of Motorola, and instead uh, it will be a Google, a guy from Google, uh, his name is Dennis Woodside, uh, who is currently the senior vice president of Google. And so he will become uh, the CEO of Motorola, um, which, you know, will not, probably won't carry the same, you know, the same responsibilities that a typical CEO would carry because Technically, since Google owns Motorola, you could say that, you know, Google is really the CEO, but obviously he'll have a lot to do with, you know, what the company does. Um, so that was kind of big, you know, and, and we don't have a lot of, a lot of news on, on why. Um, personally, you know, when I first saw the headline, I was like, it's about time because, you know, no one's really made a big deal about this, but I mean, I don't know. I think over the past year or so, Motorola just has not been doing a good job. I mean, yes, they've been pushing out awesome devices. Yes, I completely agree with that. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, you know, they've had a problem with updates. We talked about last week how their ice cream sandwich update schedule is ridiculous. Um, 
you know, pushing out update or new phones like, you know, a month after their other flagship phone just came out or, you know, a week later and just, you know, abandoning those customers. Um, Motorola Blur, which is, it's a personal thing. You know, I understand, you know, some people will like a certain UI and then some people won't. Um, but, you know, it just seemed like Moto Blur was not the most popular UI, even though it's not really called Moto Blur yet. Um, let me get a, um, a, uh, a moderator set. Hold on. I didn't mean to just stop all of a sudden there, but I need, I want to get a moderator. Uh, I thought Cam was here. Is Cam not here? Oh, you are here. And I said she was a moderator already. So great. Okay, perfect. Anyway, so yeah, Motorola Blur just didn't seem to be the most popular UI. I mean, it wasn't like major things, but it just seemed like every little decision, they were really kind of screwing it up. And you're kind of just waiting for the big moment when everyone was going to be like, you know what, forget you, Motorola. Okay, I can go somewhere else, you know, buy an HTC phone or buy another phone that, you know, they're going to push out the updates or there's not going to be a new one in a week that's better. You know, even though HTC and Samsung do that, uh, it just seemed that Motorola was, I don't know, to me, more of a culprit of doing that. So when I first saw the headline, that's what I was thinking, that it was just too many mistakes and that, you know, maybe he was being pushed out. But now it's, it's kind of a different story because it's Google that decided, you know, we want to have our own guy running the company. Uh, but still, you know, you kind of wonder the reasons, uh, you know, did Google not like all of the things that Motorola was doing with uh, with Android, with, you know, the custom skins, with all, you know, the pre-installed apps, which, you know, every phone has, but maybe now that they're buying Motorola, they have more control over it. You know, it's kind of interesting to see why they decided to do that. And, you know, obviously no one said anything and, and it might be, it might be a non-issue. You know, I may be talking about this and kind of like coming up with all these conspiracy theories and it may be nothing. It may just be that, you know, Google bought Motorola and now they want to have a Google guy, you know, being the CEO, which would make perfect sense. That's, you know, one of the reasons why you buy a company because you want to run the company. So um, that would make sense if it were nothing. And so it could be a non-issue, but I just, uh, that was interesting. So Dennis Woodside will be the new CEO of Motorola. You kind of wonder like at their, uh, you know, at when they do announcements, like, you know, events when they release a new phone, uh, is it still going to be Motorola or is it going to be like a Google event or is Mot I mean, you kind of wonder what that's going to be like, but I, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. So, but that was, um, that was a news that really caught me by surprise that I missed this week. But, uh, you know, as you know, uh, Mobile World Congress is coming up next week. Uh, tons of new phones. LG was like, screw it. We don't need to wait for MWC. We'll just announce all of them this week. And so it was like every day there was a new there were like three new phones from LG. So we had the LG Optimus L3, the LG Optimus L5, and the L7. You know, all very similar. Um, and these are, these are, I believe all of them are going to carry the same form factor similar to the Optimus View. And I might have gotten the wrong impression on that. Um, but from the picture, it seemed like they kind of wanted to go in that direction, uh, which is kind of interesting because... You know, I talked last week about how, you know, that the Optimus view with the 4-3 aspect ratio, which was made official, by the way, and so it's completely official. Um, but, you know, I talked about the Optimus view and how that 4-3 aspect ratio uh, is is kind of, it's more interesting than you would imagine. And I talked about how after using the um, the Pantech Pocket with a 4-inch display and a 4-3 aspect ratio, it really made it seem like you had more screen real estate than you actually did. And uh, it was great for, you know, reading ebooks, uh, watching videos, web browsing. It really added a lot to, ex to the experience, you know, more than you would think it would. And so, you know, I, I was talking about last week how it's kind of interesting that, you know, different manufacturers are starting to try it out and be like, okay, you know, it worked for them. You know, let's, let's try it and see if it works. So now we have the Optimus View. Uh, so these new phones, the L3, the L5, and the L7, you know, from the picture, it kind of looks like they had that same um, aspect ratio, but I, you know, I may be wrong about that. They're not, 
you know, amazing phones by any stretch of the imagination. The the L3, they kind of get better as you go on through, you know, L3 to L5 to L7. Uh, the L3 will ship with Android 2.3 and have a 3.2 inch display, so kind of like a, you know, mid-range, low-end phone. The L5 will have a 4 inch display. It will ship with Android 4.0. Uh, the L7 will also ship with Android 4.0, uh, and it will have a 4.3 inch display. Uh, all of these will also have LG's custom UI, so uh, which is which has been upgraded, and this kind of you know runs into the next story. Um, there were a lot of um, leaked videos, and and one of them included uh, hands-on with. Um, a phone I'm going to talk about in a minute, as well as the Optimus View. Um, but, you know, not only do we get a look at the phones, we also get a look at LG's UI. So like I was saying, it's it's been upgraded. Uh, there's a, kind of a new design to it. And, you know, I've talked about in the past how LG's UI is not really my favorite. I mean, Motorola, Motorola's UI is probably my least favorite. And then LG's UI is kind of just above that. It has a lot of elements of TouchWiz. But it's not as refined as as TouchWiz, and then you know some of it is just personal preference. You know I don't like the way the app drawer is catalog uh, ca categorized, um, or you know organized into categories. Which of course you can change that on some of them, but you know just other design elements. You know I don't really like, and that's that's personal preference. So it's not you know to knock on the UI. It's just me personally. But it has uh, gotten a little bit of an upgrade that you can see in these videos. You know, we've posted on phonedog.com, and so that, I'm guessing that new UI will, you know, be implemented onto these phones. Uh, you know, not a lot, whole lot of news on when we'll see the L3, the L5, or the L7. It's coming to Europe in March. The L5 and the L7 will be here sometime in the first half of 2012, but we don't know if that's for the U.S. Uh, more importantly, probably for the U.S., is the Optimus 3D Max. This is one that we probably will see in the U.S. The other ones, you know, we may see them in some form or another, um, but the Optimus 3D Max, we would probably definitely see. It's a... Uh, you know, as obviously an upgrade to the Optimus 3D, it's going to have a 4.3 inch WVGA display, 5 megapixel camera, a dual core TI OMAP processor. But the biggest thing is that it's obviously a 3D phone, and so it'll have a 3D display. Uh, that 5 megapixel cameras is actually dual cameras, so uh, you can take 3D pictures. It, it's going to ship with Android 2.3, which is kind of interesting. Um, you would think at this point, and then, you know, maybe this is just me, and, you know, this goes back to the same argument of, you know, Android versions and which version phones should ship with and, you know, when they should get upgrades or updates and different things like that. But personally, I would think you have a phone, dual core processor, a gig of RAM, you know, 9.6 millimeters thick, which is, there's thinner phones, but it's a 3D phone, so you have that. Again, you know, it is a 3D phone. So this is, you know, a high-end kind of flagship phone. You would think that they would ship it with Android 4.0, but it's not. It's Android 2.3. Um, and uh, it will be an HSPA Plus device, 21 megabits per second HSPA Plus. So kind of the interesting thing about this phone is that it's a 3D phone. And, you know, I kind of wonder... Do people still want 3D? And you guys in the chat, you know, feel free to voice your opinion on this if you're listening to me. I don't, I mean, you, most of the time you guys don't even listen to me or just off talking about something else. But if you are actually listening to me, uh, you know, do you still want a 3D phone? Because, you know, I think even when 3D was first introduced and it was a new thing, it still wasn't as exciting as I think manufacturers thought it would be. I don't think it really ever caught on as a new thing. I mean, there's always kind of new features that are introduced or new products that are introduced, and they kind of take a little while to catch on, but they do eventually catch on because, you know, whatever, people want it or it's actually useful. 3D never really caught on. It was kind of this big feature that no one actually wanted, and so I think it's interesting that LG is still releasing a 3D phone when I don't really think the original 3D phones really sold that well. I mean, obviously, you know, phones like the Optimus 3D, the Evo 3D, they probably sold fairly well because they were good phones, you know, despite, you know, regardless of the 3D, they still had, you know, dual-core processors, 
the you know Evo 3D had 4G capabilities, so it was still an awesome phone, you know, regardless of if you ever use a 3D or not. Um, but you know, with the Optimus 3D Max, again, it's another 3D phone, and you know, guys in the chat, I agree with you. I've always said that 3D is a gimmick, um, especially on a phone because it's just not that great. If you've never used a 3D phone, it's a uh, it, you know, like I said, it's not that great. I used the um, the Evo 3D. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it was kind of cool to have the, the 3D display and have the stuff popping out at you, but honestly, it gave me a headache, and uh, it was very uncomfortable. It's kind of the same thing with 3D TVs, and, and a lot of that is based on the technology of, you know, the display and then the glasses, but a lot of those give me a headache, and I just think it, at this point, is kind of a gimmick. So I was kind of surprised that LG decided to introduce this, but, you know, there it is, the Optimus 3D Max. It'll be coming to Korea in March. Like I said, we're probably going to see this in the U.S. We saw the original Optimus 3D. Um, LG's other phones, like the Optimus One, that kind of, like, mid-range phone, we also saw that in the U.S. So we're probably going to see that here sometime. We're just not entirely sure. Uh, the cool thing about all of these phones is that we actually have hands-on videos with them, not from us from another website, um, an Italian website, which is just awesome because I think Italian is one of the, the coolest languages on the planet. Uh, and you can watch these videos and listen to this guy in Italian. It's like Italian is kind of a mixture of Spanish and French. Um, I guess a little bit of Latin, but I guess, you know, most languages, a lot of languages have Latin in them, right? Probably all of them, but, um, so it's, it's kind of like this really weird sort of like Spanish with, you know, you roll the tongue and it, you got all that sharp noises, but also with French, it's like really smooth in some areas. It's like, it's, I don't know, I think it's an awesome language. That has nothing to do with what I'm talking about at all, but I've always liked Italian. So you can watch the video and listen to the guy in Italian, um, but it's hands-on videos, and these are posted on Phone Dog. Um, it's hands-on videos with the Optimus 4X HD the Optimus View and the Optimus 3D Max uh, that I just mentioned. With the Optimus 4X HD, um, I wasn't going to talk about this. I'll give you guys just a quick rundown of the specs, um, but we've heard about it a lot. Uh, it was originally known as the uh, the X3. So, I mean, we talked about it in the past, so I didn't want to spend too much time on it. 1.5 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 3 is a quad-core processor. It's going to ship with ice cream sandwich. Uh, 4.7 inch true HD display, just completely awesome phone, uh, and apparently it will be coming to T-Mobile. So if you're on T-Mobile, and I know I've had a lot of people ask me about that, um, you know, what's the next awesome phone coming to T-Mobile? And up until now, we didn't know, we didn't really know of one, but now we do. The Optimus 4X HD. It'll apparently be known as the G4X when it comes to T-Mobile, which I think is, I think it's hilarious how T-Mobile like does not care about manufacturing brands at all when it comes to naming like their phones because you think about like the G1 and the G2 those were both by HTC but like T-Mobile doesn't care the, this phone is made by LG but they're still going to call it the G4 I just think that's hilarious and then the same thing with the MyTouch phones the original MyTouch you know MyTouch 3D MyTouch 4G 3G not 3D 3G and 4G, they were all made by HTC, but then LG made a couple of phones and T-Mobile put the My Touch name on them. Like, they don't even care. They just name them whatever they want to. So, um, but that'll be coming to T-Mobile, the Optimus 4X HD. But uh, in the video, so in the video, you get a look at LG's custom UI on top of Ice Cream Sandwich. And uh, it's pretty interesting, you know, again, never really been my favorite UI. You can see some of the, you know, it's design updates that LG has made, so it's a little different, um, but definitely some nice hands-on videos. Um, so you can look at that, and then of course, I'm sure Aaron will have hands-on with all of these phones at uh, Mobile World Congress next week. The LG View is the one that I'm actually, you know, I'm actually really kind of excited about the Optimus View because... I think you you have to get your hands on it. You have to hold it. You have to use it in order to really appreciate what that display does for a device like that. Because it, it seems, it doesn't look that great. I know, it's like this square device, and it looks kind of ugly, and it doesn't seem very practical at all, but it really is. And so, 
Uh, I'm actually kind of excited about the, the Optimus view, but anyway, uh, BlackBerry Playbook OS 2.0 software update is now available. I'm going to get a drink really quick of water. My throat was getting dry. So uh, yeah, Playbook OS 2.0, this brings a lot of new features that... Yes, should have been there like from the beginning a year ago, but you know, they weren't and they are now. So you have, uh, there's a new home screen set up and I wish I had pictures of this. There's videos on YouTube if you want to watch it. Uh, we don't have a video yet. Um, I'm not sure if we have a playbook, you know, in the office if Aaron has one. If not, then we might not have a hands-on video, but you can see them, you know, all over YouTube by now. But uh, it brings, there's a new home screen set up. So you know, on typical BlackBerry, you have the categories of like, you know, media, favorites, downloads, or whatever you set the categories to be. But those are gone now. Uh, you have no categories. On the home screen, there are four shortcuts for messages, contacts, browser. There's actually more than four. Uh, calendar and app worlds, there's five. So you have those shortcuts at the bottom, and then to bring the app drawer up, you, you tap an arrow, and then it comes up just all of your apps. There's no categories. They're just in a list. You do still have um, pages that you can scroll through. So I don't know if you can organize the apps, and so maybe like have separate pages, even if you don't have categories. But you know, regardless, you know, still very well organized. Uh, to me, the categories thing never really matters to that much. And then, you know, it goes back to what I was talking about with LG's UI, how the app drawer is organized into categories. You know, never really thought that was useful because now I have to think about, okay, which category is this in? Find the category. It's just a whole lot easier to have it organized alphabetically. And I know what the app is called. I'll go to that letter and then there it is. So, you know, yeah, the not, you know, getting rid of categories, I think is a good idea, but I guess not everyone will agree. Although I guess most people would agree, otherwise they wouldn't have done it. Um, so if you, of those shortcuts, you notice that there's messages and contacts um, and calendar. So probably the biggest new features with this upgrade, with this update, is that you have now native email support with Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn in the Messages app. So when you go to the Messages app, it's not just email. It's you can also sync like your Twitter, Facebook. Uh, but you have native email support. Uh, you also have a contacts app where you can also have, you can integrate all of your contacts from, you know, Twitter, Facebook, same thing. And then the calendar app where you can, it also supports Gmail. So you can sync your Google calendars with it. These are, these are huge things. And yeah, they definitely should have been there straight from the beginning. Uh, it was pretty much ridiculous and just dumb that it wasn't there from the beginning. And I don't know why RIM decided to leave it out, but they did, and now it's there. Uh, they It looks great. It looks very well designed. Uh, the Messages app, it looks great. I, I believe the keyboard has also been updated, so you now have uh, things like autocorrect and suggestions. But it looks very well designed. Uh, you know, contacts... Calendar, definitely very useful. You know, again, I'm just surprised that RIM didn't... I mean, you know, BlackBerry is an enterprise OS. At least that's the way it's been known. You know, maybe they're trying to change that. I don't know. But that was the way it had been known as. And uh, you think of business users, what they're going to use the most is email and calendar. And so to not have those is was kind of confusing. It's there now. And I think, you know... We've talked about this before, you know, I've said in the past, I don't think RIM is dead. I think BlackBerry still has a place. I think, um, you know, we've seen pictures of BlackBerry 10 and it's just completely redesigned. And I, I think it's exciting. I think it's awesome. I think it looks great. And uh, I'm happy that RIM isn't just laying dead in the water, that they're not just like, yeah, okay, you know, the the new phones, they didn't really sell well, the playbook, it kind of tanked, and so we'll just kind of let it, we'll just kind of hide it, you know, pretend like it didn't ever happen. They're not doing that. They're still sending out updates. They're still working. They're working on the next version of BlackBerry, and they're working to make it better. They're working to improve their products, and I think to me, that's a big deal, because yeah, they made mistakes. 
Uh, and, and maybe they'll continue to make mistakes. I don't know. But nobody knows that. I think for now, what we can see is that RIM is working to improve the products that they have and working to not make the same mistakes. And I think that's a big deal. So, uh, you know, if you have a playbook, uh, download the update. Uh, let me see, what else does it bring? Uh, the web browser has been slightly improved, uh, kind of improved rendering, and it's a little bit faster. Uh, you might not notice that, but it is slightly slightly faster. Uh, you also have article reader mode, which is kind of like reader mode in iOS, where you know if you're reading an article, you tap the button, and then it kind of just shrinks it down and takes out all of the ads and all the formatting and kind of just brings it down to... A single column that you can just easily read so that's kind of a nice feature uh, oh you also duh huge Android app support and so this is a huge thing for Blackberry because uh, I've talked about this in my Blackberry challenge if you guys have watched the videos I'm using the Blackberry Tor Shiny A10 as part of a 30-day challenge and uh, one of the negatives that I've brought out is that there's no apps I mean the app Selection is very poor, not just the number of apps, but also the quality and the price. Uh, it just, you know, like, Windows Phone doesn't have a lot of apps, but they're high quality apps, and there's a lot of free ones. The prices are very low. Um, you know, with Android, it was before, of course, now there's like tons of apps, but before, there wasn't a lot of apps, but they were all free, so it was great. So, you know, at least while each app store is growing, whether it's Windows Phone or Android or whatever, they, you know, have had some weaknesses, but made up for it in other areas. With the BlackBerry app world, like, it tanks in every area. There's, there's hardly any apps. They're low-quality apps, and they're like $4. It's just ridiculous, and so... Having Android app support is a huge deal because uh, it's c because the app selection right now is is pretty poor. So um, the the Android apps are not labeled, so you know you won't know if it's an Android app until you well unless you know it is or when you download it. But there's no like there's like a certain category for Android apps. But I think that's a big deal. So uh, you know, and I don't know if this is a temporary thing or if it's going to be permanent. You know if RIM has just kind of like given up on their app world. I don't know if they're going to work harder to develop or, you know, to have more developers making apps for BlackBerry and then eventually, you know, let go of Android. I don't know. But at least for now, you have some Android apps. So that's a pretty huge update. You know, those things, Android app support, um, email, native email support, contacts, and calendar, huge, huge update. And so if you have a BlackBerry definitely download it. If you, or excuse me, if you have a, a playbook, definitely download it. If you don't have a playbook and you're wondering, should I buy it now that it has native email support and all these other features? Uh, yeah, you know, it's definitely a, a great tablet. And if for the price, you know, I think in a lot of places it's been knocked down to like $200 or something. So that's definitely a good price. If you think of other tablets in that price range, you have like um, the Nook tablet, the Kindle Fire, and, you know, very comparable, uh, you know, it kind of just depends on maybe which OS you prefer aesthetically or just in terms of features. But, you know, there's a lot of inexpensive Android tablets. I know Acer um, has a couple of inexpensive Android tablets for maybe like two or $300 that ship with like, you know, Honeycomb, a, a full-fledged tablet OS with a lot more apps and a lot more features. So, you know, in some ways, yeah, definitely worth it. It is a great tablet. But then at the same time, I think other Android tablets may be better. Maybe you, maybe it will offer you more uh, more bang for your buck, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's a, that's my input. I have a lot of people ask me about that. But you know, really, when a lot of times whenever people ask me, um, you know, if they should get a certain phone or, or a certain tablet or trying to decide between two phones, it's usually like two phones that are nearly exactly the same or, you know, maybe it's like the iPhone and the Galaxy S2 or something like, you know, the Playbook or the Kindle Fire or something like that. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, it's not just hardware to hardware or, you know, specs to spec or features to features. In a lot of ways, they're very equal and it just depends on what you prefer. So if you are a BlackBerry fan and you're trying to decide between the Playbook and something like... And, you know, an inexpensive Acer tablet or, or the Kindle Fire or Galaxy Tab, um, you know, it, 
it just depends on which OS you prefer. If you're a BlackBerry fan, go with a playbook. But um, that's usually what I say, and I know that probably is not, it seems like it's not helpful, but at the same time, there's really nothing I can say. They're very equal in a lot of ways. Let's move on to some uh, iPhone and iPad news. Of course, you know, we couldn't do a show without this um, because as it gets closer, it's just there's going to be, there's so many new rumors every week because the iPad, iPad 3 launch is coming up. We're not entirely sure when, but supposedly sometime in March, which is just a couple weeks away. So they're going to be coming on like full-fledged. But uh, to start with, we have uh, iPhone rumors and the release date, the launch date. This is one of those big things. Like before, it was always certain it was going to come in the summer, and that was that was it. You know, we could speculate about which month, maybe, or like try to get down to the specific week or the specific day. But we always knew it was going to be in the summer sometime. You know, June, July, uh, and then last year, you know, threw us a curve, and and it was announced in the fall, and so now we're like. Okay, is it coming in the fall or is it coming in the summer? And we've heard a lot, you know, back and forth. The new rumor is that it will be coming in September or October. So about the same time as last year. Uh, and app- apparently they will be sticking to that launch date, which I think makes sense. Um you know, there's not really any reason to to launch it in the summer. You know, they probably just, I don't know, happened to pick that month and then they wanted to have it once a year on the same month or in the same month every year and so it was just always in the summer. You know, it, I don't really think the summer is any better than the fall. In fact, if you think about it, fall is closer to holiday shopping so the fall might, might even be better. So, it's really no big deal. If they want to keep to a fall release date, I think that makes perfect sense. You know, keep it at once a year. Uh, but And apparently that's what they're going to do. So expect the iPhone 5 uh, in September or October. I'm going to call it the iPhone 5. And I know a lot of people, get, they get confused. Like, is it going to be... Because is it going to be the 5 or is it going to be the 6? Because technically it went from the 4 to the 4S. So technically it should be iPhone 6, but then like maybe it'll be the 5. To me, it's like completely obvious. Okay, we had the iPhone 3G, we had the iPhone 3GS, and then we had the 4. Now we have the 4, the 4S, the 5. I mean, to me, it's totally obvious it's going to be the 5. Now, I, I could be wrong. I mean, you know, Tim Cook could get on stage and, you know, call it the iPhone 6. But I mean... I'm like 95% sure it's going to be called the iPhone 5. I don't know why this is so confusing to everybody. It's it's a pattern, okay? I mean, it's a clear-cut pattern here. Anyway, not a big deal. I just wanted to... That's been frustrating me a lot. People are like, the iPhone 5 slash 6, or is it the 4S? It's the 5, okay? It's the iPhone 5. Anyway, that will be coming in September or October. Uh, Mac Rumors... Uh, confirms this. They have a a source, a supplier that's provided iPhone parts in the past, and they also said that Apple is uh, aiming for a September launch. And uh, iPad 3 rumors. We actually have some pictures, and they don't really tell us a whole lot since it looks, you know, pretty much the same as the iPad 2. But you know, at least we'll get a few. You know, kind of a quick look at it. So this is a picture that showed up from a Taiwanese site called Apple Daily. And uh, this is supposedly um, a shot of the back of the iPhone 3, or the iPad 3, sorry. The, the top of this, the top picture, is the back of the iPad 3. And then uh, if you look down there, there's three different iPads. There's the original iPad, the iPad 2, and the iPad 3, and if you notice, the camera sensor is larger, and so the rumor is that a larger sensor is going to be now an 8 megapixel camera, which is pretty huge considering the iPad 2 had a, like a, what, 1 megapixel camera, this measly little puny thing, so to bump it up from a 1 megapixel camera to an 8 megapixel camera, definitely huge. Uh, would I be surprised? I mean, somewhat, but not really. Um, In the one sense, I would be surprised just because it is a huge jump. You know, going from one megapixel to a megapixel is a huge jump. So it it kind of is would be surprising. 
But at the same time, the iPad 2 should have never shipped with a one megapixel camera. It should have been at least a three megapixel camera. Um, so if you go by, you know, what the iPad 2 should have shipped with and, you know, iPad 3 possibly shipping with an eight megapixel camera, it's really not that much of a jump. Now, obviously, I know, you know, Apple isn't going by that. They're not going by what it should have shipped with. But, you know, if you look at it that way, that's the way I see it. You know, the iPad 2 should have had a 3 to 5 megapixel camera. So, yeah, it would make perfect sense for the iPad 3 to have an 8 megapixel camera. You know, that being said, if it had a if it had a 5 megapixel camera, I think that would sound more reasonable if I had to make a guess. I would say 5 megapixel camera. But, you know, that's what we're hearing, 8 megapixel camera. And uh, we also heard from someone else that it was going to be an 8 megapixel camera. So, maybe it will be. Uh, also, we also have a picture of the iPad 3's logic board, and I don't have this here just because it was just a logic board, it didn't really tell us anything. But um, the picture shows the SOC as being labeled A5X, and uh, this is kind of interesting because the original iPad had an A4 processor, the iPad 2 had an A5 processor, or chip, it's actually a system on a chip, not just a processor. So it was an A5 chip, uh, and so everyone kind of thought that the, the iPad 3 would have an A6 chip, and therefore, you know, the logic being that we went from, you know, single core to dual core, so now it's going to be a quad core processor. Well, now that we see the, it, that it's going to be labeled A5X, um, this is kind of lending more credence to the fact that it won't have a quad-core processor, that it will still be a dual-core processor. At least that's a rumor. Um, Cam says, with Sydney's logic, it would have been iPhone, iPhone 3G, 3GS, 3, wait, 3, 3S. They called it 4 because it was 4th gen. No, I mean, I get that. I know, like, up until the 3G, um, with the, with the iPhone 3G, the naming scheme went completely off because it was named the 3G because it was a 3G device. Um, so I, I get that. And then going from like 3G to 3GS to 4, I know that like it doesn't make completely complete sense. But for me, if you ignore the, the generation numbers and what it should have been called and just go by what they actually called it, you know, 3G to 3GS to 4 to 4S, I think iPhone 5 makes sense. Don't, don't tangle with me, Cameron. I will, I will take you, I'll take you down. I'll take you down to Chinatown and all the way back in between. You don't want to mess with me, fool. Yo, okay, I'm going to stop. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's, again, that's my theory. I was talking about this before, how when we heard that random rumor that it was going to have a quad-core processor, I was like, you don't really have anything to back that up, and ever since then, we've been he hearing more that it's going to have a dual-core processor, and this kind of backs that up, too. Uh, more pictures of iPad 3 parts. We're just seeing parts all over the place, although this is also a picture of the back of it. Uh, as you can see, we have the iPad 2 and the iPad 3 there, and it looks a little bit different. It, it, I don't know, to me it looks slightly thicker, and it is supposed to be thicker, but I don't think noticeably thicker, but this to me looks noticeably thicker. Um, but there it is, that's a picture from MIC Gadget. And um, this also shows uh, the lens hole being a little bit larger, so that could, again, you know, mean that it's going to have an 8 megapixel camera. And they also confirm uh, that the A5X chip will be dual core and not quad core. So just a couple of, you know, iPad 3, iPhone rumors there. Uh, again, you know, basically just the same things we've been hearing. And then, you know, next week somebody could come in and say, you know, no, it's going to have a you know quad core processor and then change everything. So who knows? Um, but uh, kind of interesting. And that's coming up pretty soon, I think. The rumored launch date as of right now is March 7th, so that's coming up pretty quickly, and so we'll know soon enough. Uh, let me see, it's 5.12, and I got started at 5.30, so that would mean at 5.15 we have to go to the open Q&A. So that's cool, that's perfect timing actually. The last thing I wanted to talk about, and then we'll move on to the open Q&A, uh, T-Mobile announced its Q4 2011 earnings. Uh, not a lot of big news. They lost some customers. 
Uh, they're going to start deploying their LTE services in 2013 using the AWS spectrum that they got from um, the AT&T deal, you know, breaking up. So kind of, you know, cool there if you're a T-Mobile customer, you're going to get LTE coming up in about a year. <laughs> Uh, or they're going to start deploying it in 2013, so it might be a little more than a year once you get it. But uh, the cool thing about this is that now that they have this new spectrum and you know they're kind of moving away from 2G and moving to 3G and 4G, they're going to refarm some of their spectrum. Uh, their 19 megahertz spectrum, they're now going to be used, is now, they're now, now going to use that to roll out their HSPA plus 4G coverage. And so uh, this is going to be great for people who have the iPhone unlocked because before they were using their um, 1700 megahertz band for their 3G and now, which was incompatible with, you know, every other GSM phone, it was always 1900, you know, 21. And so if you're going to use an unlocked 3G phone on T-Mobile, it was only going to be Edge, and that included the iPhone. But now that they're going to move, be moving it over to the 1900, that's compatible with, a, you know, with basically, you know, it's compatible universally. So if you have an iPhone unlocked, you'll actually be able to get 3G on T-Mobile's network, which is kind of negates the need for T-Mobile to even get the iPhone because now you just buy it unlocked and basically use it on T-Mobile anyway. And this will be true for other phones, not just the iPhone, but other Android phones. Um, you know, before you could buy, if you were on like AT&T, you could buy an unlocked phone, you know, smartphone, whether it was Android or whatever, and then just kind of pop your SIM card in and you'd get 3G or 4G or whatever it was. But T-Mobile customers couldn't do that because they used different spectrums, even though it was all GSM, they just used different spectrums for 3G, uh, you know, different from everyone else. So now you can, you can do that. So T-Mobile customers, you don't have to feel left out anymore. Anyway, so that's, I thought that was pretty cool. You know, iPhone, um, who knows if T-Mobile will get the new iPhone, uh, this was interesting. CEO Philip Hum said that T-Mobile will need the right terms before inking a deal with Apple to get the iPhone, which I think is gutsy because that obviously means that they've talked about it um, because, you know, the right terms means that they've heard the wrong terms. And so they've obviously talked about this and T-Mobile was bold enough to say, you know, that's not a good deal for us. We don't want that. It's for whatever reason, maybe it was, you know, they not good for the co the con company kept almost saying country. And then I was not finishing the word anyway. Um, but I don't know if it was that or if it was just, you know, maybe it wasn't good for customers, but whatever the reason, um, kind of interesting. Who knows if we'll get the iPhone, but let's move on now to the open Q and a, uh, this is my favorite part because I can pause and read questions and you guys give me something to talk about instead of me trying to find random topics to talk about. So open q and I'm here. I, I'm on Ustream. I'm on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, I'll try to I'll try to remember to check that. Um, I don't always remember, but I will try to remember to check that. And um, so, yeah, ask away. Hey Sydney, how are you? Do you know if the My Touch 4G slide will get ice cream sandwich by any chance? Sorry, you probably hear this a lot. Well, you know, it's my job. I, I do. People ask me all the time when their phone's gonna need an update. My Touch 4G slide. Um, I don't have that on my list, so I'm not sure. Uh, you could probably Google it and find out, but right now, um, I don't have any news on that. Uh, I like how T-Mobile is supporting Windows Phone. When will Galaxy Tab 10.1 Wi-Fi get ice cream sandwich? Um, again, I don't... 10.1? Yeah, I don't have that yet. Yeah, no solid dates on that yet. Uh, Sydney, since the Galaxy S won't get ice cream sandwich, do you think the Galaxy players will? Um, probably not. I mean, maybe the newer ones, but... Probably not, you know, the ones that are the same generation. I would, I doubt it. Uh, I know you don't like Motorola applications platform. What's your favorite Android skin? TouchWiz. Yeah, TouchWiz has always been my favorite, and it's just gotten better, I think. Uh, will there be more smartphones designed like the LG Double Play? 
Possibly. Um, you know, the double play had uh, the dual screens. They ha you had the main display, and then you would slid out the keyboard. Uh, there was a little display in the middle of the keyboard. It was actually very useful, and I loved it. I, I thought it was going to be a joke, um, but it was actually very useful. So, I yeah, I hope it's used, but we haven't heard of any yet. Uh, let me see. Let me check Facebook. I remembered. I'm going to check it now while I remember. Uh, when is the Droid Razor getting ice cream sandwich? Um, the Droid Razor is in evaluation and planning uh, phase, and so we're not entirely sure when it will get it, but that's the update that we have for Motorola. It's in evaluation and planning mode. Okay, back to Ustream. Uh, what tablet do you have? Uh, I actually have the Kindle Fire, yeah. Will the Galaxy Tab 7.0 Plus get ice cream sandwich? I'm not sure. I know the Galaxy Tab, uh, the original, will not get ice cream sandwich, so I don't know if the Plus will. Sydney, do you listen to any podcasts like Tech... No, uh, I haven't heard of that one. I used I listened to a bunch of podcasts, um, but I haven't heard of that one. Wasn't the Kyocera Echo on Sprint just the ugliest Android phone ever? Um, the ugliest ever... I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't think I've really seen, like, a completely ugly Android phone. They're all, I mean, some of them are, yeah, less attractive, but, I mean, ugly is kind of a strong word. What time zone are you in? I'm central. I'm central also. Is a Kindle Fire really good or just okay? Uh, it's good for $200. Yeah, I, that's what I said, you know, when I did the review. Um, it's $200, so it's not perfect, um, it's, yeah, sometimes, it, you know, it's laggy or whatever, but for the most part, it's great, and it's worth the $200. It's not worth, you know, three or four hundred dollars, or five hundred, but it doesn't cost three or four hundred dollars, it costs two hundred, and it's, it's worth that. Uh, Sydney, is there any news on Windows phones coming to Verizon or prepaid carriers like Virgin? Uh, let me see. Windows phone. A lot of them going to AT&T. Um, yeah, I don't have any for Verizon yet. Um, AT&T is picking up a lot of them, though. Uh, how do you turn the auto-rotation off on Windows Phone? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't have, I have a Windows Phone. You guys know I use that as my personal device, but I'm not using it right now because I'm doing the BlackBerry Challenge, so I don't have it near me. I can't check that, um, but I've never seen a setting for that. Do you think the three year do you think we should have three year contracts like Canada to reduce the three hundred dollar price tag on Verizon? Uh, no, I, I think three years is too long. Just for the rate that technology is growing, I think three years is too long. My sister has the only Verizon Windows phone. They need to step it up. Yes, they do. Yes. How many times did you try to break your BlackBerry? Um well, no matter how frustrated I get with it, I can't break it because it's, I mean, it's not mine. It's a demo unit that we got, um, so I can't break it. No, I've been frustrated plenty of times, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting through it. Two years is too long for contract. Yeah, some, for some people, two years is too long. But, you know, for most people, like for us, you know, two years is too long. But for most people, I think it's okay. A year would probably be ideal, but then the price would go up, so... Again, you know, that wouldn't really be ideal. Uh, why did you use an Android phone on your emergency days off rather than your Windows phone? Uh, because my uh, my T-Mobile SIM card is in the Torch, and so, you know, my Windows phone is a T-Mobile, and it was just, you know, instead of, like, switching out the SIM card every time I wanted to use it, I just brought an AT&T Android phone, so it was just easier. Uh, I feel bad for you 30 days with the worst OS ever. <laughs> Um, also, the Android phone that I brought, I'm actually using for a test, and so it was, it was a good way to test it out. Uh, how much money do you pay for your phone's monthly plan? Well, I, I mean, does it matter? That's kind of an odd question. <laughs> Sydney, I tweeted you about my iPod Touch and the Galaxy Player. Thank you so much for being so kind and helpful. You're welcome. Yeah, I, you know, if you send me a, a message on Twitter asking me a question, I don't always answer them, and I'm very sorry. Sometimes I don't have the time, or I don't have the answer, or the answer is like something you could easily Google, and I know maybe that's, I don't know what, selfish of me, whatever, however you want to call it, but I just, 
simple questions sometimes I intentionally don't answer because you could easily Google it and I'm just like, I don't, I'm working on, you know, doing something else and I would, I would rather just do my job, but, um, but I do try to answer the ones that I can, um, but I, I'm sorry if I, if I miss any. Uh, what do you think of Sense 4.0 if you have seen the video of it? Yeah, I saw it. I don't like it. But, you know, it, custom UI is very personal because it's all visual. It's it's just based on what you want to see. And so I don't I don't like it, but I know a lot of people will. How does the, Razor, the Droid Razor Max battery compare to the Galaxy Nexus on Verizon? Well, it's basically twice as large, so you can get two days out of the Razer Max and probably like one day on the Galaxy Nexus. Sydney, does Samsung updated TouchWiz? I wish they would. Um, TouchWiz, yeah, TouchWiz 4.0. I mean, if you haven't used it, it's a big update and it's, I think it's, it looks great. Who is your favorite musical artist? Um, I don't know. I like the Killers. I like the Beatles. Um, I like, I like Britney Spears. I, I know it's shallow, but I mean, what? She has good music. I mean, if it has a catchy beat, what's wrong with that? I like listening to it. Um, I like, I think right now, probably my favorite band is AWOL Nation. Uh, but, you know, that could change. I do like the Killers, though. I do like the Beatles. Um, yeah, I think I'm forgetting. Oh, One Republic. I like One Republic. Uh, there's another band. Oh, My Chemical Romance. <clears throat> I think. And Queen. I like Queen. But probably My Chemical Romance. Okay. Uh, when will next Windows Phone update come out? Uh, I believe... Let me see. I have that. I have that. I know that. At least I should have that. I wonder if I deleted that. Uh, yeah, I deleted that. I had it in my notes. I'm sure we have it on Phone Dog though. Uh, random questions. Yeah. Uh, Sydney, when will when will the Thrive get ice cream sandwich? Uh, the Thrive, we actually just got n news on that. Uh, the Thrive 10.1 and the seven inch Thrive will get 4.0 by the end of spring. No Sid phones with TouchWiz 3.0 like me. Oh, okay. Will phones with TouchWiz 3.0 ever get the updated TouchWiz? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, actually. I, I don't think we've heard... Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the answer would be no. Um, but I don't think we've heard anything solid on that. I think it might have just been a given that they're not going to get them. But, I mean, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, when will the Razor get an ice cream sandwich? I think somebody just asked me about that. It's in evaluation and planning mode right now. Someone's car alarm was going off uh why do reviewers rarely talk about the look and feel of a phone um i try to talk about it because it's important to me but you know for some people it's just not important to them and uh you know i think the look and feel is something that that you can gather from just you know looking at it or maybe getting hands-on time like in a store uh, whereas you know the things that you don't know or that you can't know are performance and different things, you know, battery life and things like that. Look and feel, I think, is something that you can gather from, like, pictures or, like I said, you know, using it in the store. Um, I, I try to talk about it just because it's important to me, but that's, that's just me. It's not important to everybody, and I think that's, you know, everyone has different thinking. Uh, one of my friends and I walk around in school and sing Killer Queen of Bohemian Rhapsody. Awesome. Uh, let me check Facebook. Okay, thank you. On Facebook, Windows Phone Tango is planned to release Q2. Okay, thank you. Do you miss Windows Phone? I do. Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. Is there going to be an episode of Dog Pound this week? No. Uh, do you think OEM should stop supporting a device that's older than two years? Oop. Wait, what happened to that question? Dude, that question just disappeared. Okay. I think, I think this, I think the chat is like jumping around and it, so, okay, here it is, it's back, okay. Um, do you think OEM should stop supporting a device that's older than two years old, such as a Samsung Galaxy S? I mean, the contract is just about done after two years. 
Good point. You know, a contract is two years long, so after a, when a phone is two years old, stop supporting it. I think that makes sense. Um, they have to stop supporting it at some point, and um, if you have the chance to upgrade, then you know it's not their fault that they, that you don't take advantage of that. So yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. Uh, I think you know, kind of what maybe you might not be thinking about is that some people might have bought the Galaxy S a year after it came out, and so then. You know, they have it for two years, and if Samsung stops supporting it after they've only had it for one year, true, the phone is two years old, but maybe they didn't know that because, you know, salesmen don't tell people that. Don't, they don't tell them that this phone is a year old. If it's there, they're going to sell it. And so I think that's a good point, uh, but at the same time, it's not still not the perfect situation or scenario. Uh, Windows Phone has become more popular. Okay. Um... When will, when will Windows Phone beat other OSs? I'm not sure. There's been a lot of estimates that, you know, 2012 going into 2014 will be, you know, Windows Phone will have a large stake in the market, but those are just estimates. Uh, Location-based reminders are handy. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it's 528, and I start at 530, right? Okay, so two more minutes. Two more minutes, so I'll try to answer as many questions. Facebook, when will the AT&T Galaxy S2 get ice cream sandwich? Uh, the Galaxy S2, the I, I, I don't know if this is the unlocked version, but it's supposed to have it by the end of Q1, which is probably March. So uh, hopefully the AT&T version will see it sometime, sometime around then. You started at... You started at 34. Oh, I started at 34. Okay, excuse me. We still have five minutes then. Okay. Texans or Cowboys? Uh, well, if I had to root for one, probably the Cowboys, but um, even then, not really. I mean, I don't think the Cowboys are that good. Um, and that, I don't know. I mean, Cowboys fans may light me up for that, but the Cowboys are not as good as people think they are. If you just watch them, um, they're not disciplined enough. You know, and a lot of it is injuries, too. You know, when you have your best wide receiver out and your running back out, and you know, and then whoever else happens to get injured. And then, you, you know, you have the guy, the running back, I can't remember his name now, who happened to come in and actually be good, but they didn't know that. And, he ha- and so then it was just, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think the Cowboys are as good. But the biggest thing is just they're not disciplined. I mean, they have all those penalties. And I don't know, maybe if you watch them all the time, it may just seem like a regular thing. But then you watch in the playoffs and the Super Bowl, there's hardly any penalties because they're disciplined and that's what it takes. And I just think, of course, I don't, I mean, I watch enough football to, to know, but I'm not a huge football fan. So there's a lot of things that I don't know. But just from what I've seen of the Cowboys and other elite teams like, you know, Patriots, Giants, Saints, the Colts before, you know, Peyton Manning got injured and they just tanked. That shows you how amazing Peyton Manning is. I mean, same team with Peyton Manning, Super Bowl. Without Peyton Manning, no wins. I mean, come on. That's like freaking amazing. Anyway, did MWC start today? No. Are there any Windows phones at MWC? Uh, Not that we know of. Hey, Sydney, what are you most looking forward to from MWC? I don't know. I actually don't have a particular device I'm looking forward to. Um, I think Nokia is supposed to have some new devices, but we don't, I don't know if they're Windows phone. Sydney, would you rather have a low-end Android phone like something from e- ZTE or a high-end feature phone like the HTC Freestyle? A low-end piece of crap Android phone, I would rather have the Freestyle. But that's like talking like... Something like the Huawei Ascend or like, yeah, ZTE where it's like a 600 megahertz processor and like, you know, 200, like, and and just, yeah, a low-end piece of crap smartphone. I would rather have something like the HTC Freestyle, Uh, but just a typical, like, mid-range to where it's okay, then, yeah, I mean, I would probably go with a smartphone, but low-end, yeah, definitely Freestyle. I think I just answered the question like three times and just repeated the same thing over and over. I have a tendency to do that. Hey, Sydney, what's your favorite sport and team? Um, Dallas Mavericks. I'm a Mavericks fan. I love basketball. I love, I've loved basketball ever since I was a kid. I love playing it. I love watching it. Uh, it's just it's a really fun sport. 
And so, yeah, I'm a big Mavericks fan. Um, last season was probably the greatest season of my life. And then, uh, and then this season has been probably one of the worst seasons. Not the worst because, obviously, you know, back in the 90s, the Mavericks were pretty pathetic. But, you know, this has been... But, you know, considering all the trouble they've had, all the injuries, the terrible start they had, Dirk not performing very well at all, considering all of that, they're still, like, what, third or fourth in the West? I mean... That's, they're having a bad season thus far, and they're in the top four. I mean, that's saying something. I mean, when they, if they, if everyone starts playing well and injuries aren't a problem, I mean, that's definitely a lot of promise. But who knows? I mean, anything could happen. One more minute. Okay, one more minute. Going off topic again. Hey, you know, I can talk whatever, talk about whatever I want to talk about. Okay, that's not true. Actually, I have to, I have to stick on topic. Will WebOS ever make a comeback? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I You know, we've talked about it so much, and I've said my piece, and I've said whatever of what I think, but, you know, the bottom line, I really don't know if, if WebOS is going to make a comeback. Are you getting the iPad 3? Probably not, no. Um, what's after LTE? Uh, you get LTE 2, yeah, LTE Advanced. Um... Do you think display resolution will get any higher on phones? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, it's possible. I don't see why not. Is it necessary? I don't know. I mean, once you go to, once you go to, you know, 1280 by 720 on a, you know, 4.5 inch display, the pixel density is, I mean, it's so dense that it, like, it, any higher would make no difference. I mean, I don't think you would notice it. But, you know, I don't know, I wouldn't think you would, but maybe you would, so. Okay, uh, when will we see real 4G? What do you think of Steve Ballmer? Steve Ballmer, yeah, you know, not the gre- the best speaker, but, uh, you know, that's, yeah. Um, anyway, okay, it's 534, which means it's time to go. I'm um, sorry we got started late, but we still had a good show. I'm glad you guys were here. Uh, and uh, if you missed any of it, I, I posted on YouTube, so you can watch the recording of it and see the whole thing, uh, and uh, I'll have a timeline, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but I'll have a timeline uh, in the description where you can, you can like skip around and you don't have to watch the whole thing. But anyway, uh, that's it. I'll see you guys next week, same time, same place, 5 p.m. Eastern time. I will try to, it will be 5 p.m. Eastern time, I promise, on Ustream, uh, but that's it. I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.